Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle and I'm the owner of Damn Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. If you guys are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that all of my groups and links are posted in the description below in case you want to check them out. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be using three of my vinyl patterns. As soon as I printed out the top vinyl of this tumbler, which is the vintage floral and bird pattern, I had to get it on a cut because it is totally my vibe and I love how this turned out. So this tumbler, we are going to be wrapping the cup with vinyl. We are also going to be glittering, pinstriping, and I am going to show you guys how I hand paint these fun little daisies. Everything you see listed here will be covered in today's tutorial, but as always, if you guys have questions about a step that I covered or materials that I used, please feel free to ask in the comment section or in one of my groups and I will come back and answer them. But for now, we're going to go ahead and get started on this tutorial and I hope y'all enjoy. y'all so to get started we are going to start with a 30 ounce hog tumbler these are the two vinyl patterns that i'm going to be using this is one of my favorites it is just a vintage backing with kind of brown flowers and birds that are just outlined i don't know i just really like this pattern it's just a vintage western feel which if you guys watch my tutorials, y'all know that I like this style. And I opted for the brown cowhide. I thought this would go well with the other pattern vinyls that I was using. I do also have a black cowhide on the drunkflamingo.com. So I'm just starting by trimming off all of my white edges. I'm going to use my cup cradle from Cami Page Boutique. We're just going to draw a straight line using that cup cradle as a guide. If you guys do not have any of Brooke's tools, I highly suggest them. I use them at least one of her tools with every cup that I make. So I'm just trimming my vinyl down to the size that I want it for my cup. I wanted the top part of my vinyl to be the thickest part. So I brought this vinyl down about three fourths of the way. So I am just going to cut a small amount of the backing off of my vinyl. So we can kind of use this as a hinge just to make sure that everything lines up perfectly. And once I'm sure that this vinyl is straight on my tumbler, we are just going to flip it over and start removing that backing as we are smoothing down the vinyl with my little squeegee. So I'm just slowly working on this, just making sure that there are no wrinkles. And then I'm going to trim off this excess. So now I am just going to take a piece of painter's tape and this is going to be my guide so that I can get a straight line on this tumbler. I know a lot of people do this freehand. I do not trust myself to do it freehand. So I just put my blade right up against that tape wherever the excess vinyl is hanging over or overlapping. And we are just going to cut that off and then peel up that extra piece of vinyl. So now we have a good straight line. So next, what I'm going to do is just cut a small piece of my tooled leather vinyl. I just wanted a small piece in the center between the vintage bird and floral vinyl and the cowhide vinyl just to kind of break it up. And this is where the glitter is going to waterfall out of. 
out of the top and the bottom of this vinyl. And since I know that my top piece of vinyl is straight, I do not need to draw another line on my tumbler. I am just lining it up with that top piece of vinyl and wrapping it around. Then I am just going to cut this straight. And I am just trimming off just the tiniest piece that was not perfectly even. So now I am just measuring my cowhide vinyl. And we are just going to cut this piece. And since this was a little bit larger piece of vinyl, I again just use that cup cradle to draw a straight line. We're doing the same thing, just using this like a hinge. And just making sure that it lines up on the top and the bottom. And once we're sure that it is even, we are going to start removing that backing. I am also just making sure that the cowhide is lining up with the tooled leather vinyl. And then we're going to get our little piece of tape again, and we're just going to trim off that little uneven extra piece. So once all of our vinyl is straight on our tumbler, I am going to take my edging tool, also by Kami Page Boutique. I love this little edging tool. It's super compact. I can move it out of the way whenever I'm not using it. I got the tool that has the extra space in it. So I can make my rims really small or I can also make them a little larger if I need to and we're just going to press our tumbler right up next to that blade and turn our tumbler around and then you can peel off that piece of vinyl which gives us a super smooth straight rim So once I'm sure all of my vinyl is adhered and there's no wrinkles, we are going to pop this on the turner for epoxy. These are magnetic arms and a two cut magnetic turner from the Tumblr Grip. I love this turner. It is so compact, really easy for me to work with and film tutorials on. I do have a discount code. It is damn fancy. It will get you 10% off your first order. We are just going to pop them on there and then cover our tumblers with Artistry's one-to-one -one fast set. I also have a code for them if you guys want to try it out. It is also damn fancy. And the reason I epoxy before I glitter is because I was going to be painting the daisies. So if I glittered first, then I then the daisies would cover the glitter instead of the glitter kind of covering the daisies, if that makes sense. And I wanted to make sure that my tumbler was covered in epoxy first, because if I was not happy with how the daisies turned out, I could easily just wash it off with plain old soap and water. So once I get these covered in epoxy, I'm just going to take my torch and I am going to pop bubbles. I typically just torch for one rotation and that will take care of all the bubbles and even everything out. And once this layer of epoxy has cured, we will be ready for our next step. All right guys, so now that this tumbler has epoxy on it, we are ready to paint our daisies. These are the colors I'm using. I'm using Color Fix paints in white, cinnamon donut, French silk, and succulent. 
I am also going to be using glitter glue to apply my glitter. All of these paints and glitter glue can be found on Artistry's website. This is the brush I'm going to be using to make the center of my daisies. I like the skinny angled brushes. And then for the petals, I'm going to be using a kind of smaller rounded brush. And you can definitely practice your daisies beforehand if you're not confident in them. I did on paper before I got the hang of them. So we are just going to start with white. And we are going to make the petals by starting from the outside and then slowly kind of pulling them in. So the outside of the petals are thicker and the inside are a little thinner. And I really like the coverage that this paint gives some areas of the petals are super opaque but the parts where I may be dragging a little bit are a little bit more translucent and you can kind of see through to the background just slightly but I really really like that effect obviously if you had a white background or a lighter background different colors would kind of show through and now we have one flower petal section complete. So I am going to do this all around my tumbler. I am just going to make the petals and then we will go back and do the center. You don't want to fill in the center of the flower until the petals are completely dry because you do not want the yellow and brown paints mixing with the white and kind of muddling those colors together. And if you guys need a visual on how daisies look, you can definitely pull up images on Google just to see what they look like, get the feel um, for the movement that you want for them. And I'm going to make some where the daisies are kind of face up and the petals are all down. So I'm going to speed this part up just a little bit. You guys can definitely slow it down if you need to, or if you want to skip ahead about 20 seconds, 30 seconds, I will be moved on to the centers. And you guys can also see that I am varying them in heights. Some of the flowers are a little bit higher. Some of them are a little bit lower. And if I do this tumbler again, I will start my daisies a little bit higher. I totally forgot that I was going to put glitter cascading from the leather vinyl. So it did end up covering a little bit more of the daisies than I would like, but I still think it turned out really good. So now we're going to do the centers. I'm going to slow this down just a little bit. So we are going to start with dipping the top portion of our brush into the yellow paint and the bottom portion of our brush into the brown paint. So our brush is going to be two-toned and I will kind of show you guys what we're going to do. We are just going to tap this brush in a kind of like an oval motion. so that we get that two-toned color. It's a little difficult to do this on a piece of paper that I'm holding in my hand, but you guys can kind of see how the exterior of the center of the daisy is going to be yellow. 
where the center and some of the outer edges are going to be brown. So I'm just getting a little bit of each color on my paper just to make it a little easier to dip in. And you don't need a ton of paint on your brush. We don't need it too loaded. So I am looking for my daisies that I did first. Whichever petals are the driest is what I'm going to start with. So we are just going to tap, tap, tap. So it's a tapping motion. You're not sweeping or swiping or doing a brush stroke. You are tapping the brush to get that effect. So there is a close-up of one of the centers. So I am just basically dipping my brush into the yellow and brown each time I move to a different flower. So I'm just going to speed this up again, but you are basically just going to do this for every flower. And I know a lot of you guys are intimidated by hand painting, but I promise you if I can do it, y'all can do it. I had never painted daisies before. I did them on these tumblers. I just practiced a little bit on a sheet of paper before I moved on to a cup. And this little flower right here, I was not crazy about. There was one of them that I just did not like. And this is why I am glad that I epoxied first because as you will see in a minute, I end up wiping it off and redoing it. I think it was this one right here. It was just looking a little funny. <laughs> it was one of those situations where I just kept adding and adding when I should have stopped. So I just got a little bit of acetone and just wiped that paint off. It was super easy to wipe off. And then I just went back in with my white paint. And just added one more little flower. So now that we're done with our flower portion, we are going to go in with a really thin brush and we're just going to make some stems with our green paint. And I'm just doing this very lightly. We're just basically starting at the base of the petals and pulling that paint down. And I am doing two coats for this green because it was a pretty light green 
next to the vinyl that it was painted on top of. And then when I get done with my stems, I am just painting on some leaves for our daisies. I will show you guys a close up of how I am painting them in just a second. And with these daisy leaves, I also did two coats. So here is some close up of the leaves. And once this paint dries, you can go ahead and pop this on the turner for another layer of epoxy. I like to do my cups in layers. That way, if I mess up on the glitter and need to remove it, I'm not going to ruin the daisies that I just hand painted. But if you feel comfortable just going right into glitter, you can do that as well. So I am first going to start with my pinstripes. This is a rose gold holographic I get from my local vinyl supplier. They are linked in the description. It should be under um, standard vinyl and then opals maybe. If you guys did not know, I do have a pinstripe file on thedrunkflamingo.com. A lot of y'all asked for that, so I finally put one together. It has my most popular sizes, which is 0 0.07, 0 0.05, and 0 0.03. I like to print out full sheets at a time. That way I have a lot. I'm not having to cut them constantly and also have different sizes in case I want to um, layer them on top of each other. So I'm just adding one more pinstripe right beneath the original pinstripe just to give it a little bit more interest. And yes, I am just eyeballing this. And y'all can see that I was <laughs> having a hard time matching this up, which usually I don't have that much of a hard time. I think it was because the rose gold and the brown vinyl were similar in shades so it was a little hard to see where I was laying it anyway but I eventually got it So now I will add one more next to the bottom stripe. So I'm just pressing that down really well. Now I'm just going to take some painter's tape and I'm just going to tape right over those pinstripes. So this will prevent any glitter glue and glitter from getting on the pinstripes and the leather vinyl. So I'm doing the same thing to the bottom section. And once I have everything taped off, I am going to take some glitter glue. If you guys have watched my tutorials lately, y'all will know that I typically only use glitter glue now to apply my glitter. I used to only use epoxy or clear spray paint, but ever since I started using glitter glue, it is the best thing. <laughs> 
It is nothing like Mod Podge. It has a very similar application to epoxy. I can get great ombres with glitter glue. If y'all have not tried it, I highly suggest it. I always have at least two bottles on hand because I do not want to run out. So I just applied my glitter glue and I am just sprinkling on the brown glitter. This is gingerbread from the Drunk Flamingo. Then I am taking my tea strainer and sprinkling glitter down the tumbler as it is angled. So I get that nice little gradient. Then I am going to go ahead and peel off that bottom piece of tape just so our glitter glue does not dry on there and lift pieces of glitter glue or glitter that has dried. Next, I am going to use Autumn Sweater. This is a customer favorite. And this is where I realized that I should have painted my daisies a little higher up just so we could get a little bit more of that glitter. But we are doing the same thing. I am just barely sprinkling some right next to the tape just so we get a good base for that glitter. And then since this is a chunky glitter, I am just going to take some of these pieces with my fingers and just sprinkle them on there. Just let them kind of fall down the tumbler. And I am just pressing down some of these pieces. There weren't really too many sticking up. Then we're going to remove this tape. And here is what it looks like. I love it. So I'm just scooting over some of those really chunky pieces off of the pinstripes just so they won't dry on the tumbler overlapping the pinstripes. So now what Most we're going to do is when I seal, seal this I do use clear spray paint. However, if I do have pinstripes or this metallic vinyl on my tumbler. I do not use clear spray paint because it will cause the pinstripes to curl and lift. So we are going to use Quick Seal from Artistry. And when you're using this product, you really just need a small amount. And I'm just sealing that glitter really well. The liquid sealer just kind of gets in all of those cracks and crevices and keeps that glitter in its place. And I personally have not had it react to the metal or the textured vinyl like clear spray paint can. And y'all can see I am just barely dipping my paintbrush in there. And then I am going on top of the pinstripes just to seal that in as well. And some of my videos, you may also see me use UV resin to seal my pinstripes. Um, it really depends on what vinyl I'm using. I just know which vinyls have a tendency to lift and others may not. But sometimes I will put just the tiniest drop of UV resin just on the ends of my pinstripes and cure that and that will keep your vinyl from lifting as well. And y'all can see that I'm just starting at that base and pulling that quick seal down just so none of, none of that loose glitter 
gets on the leather vinyl. And then we're just sealing those pinstripes. And I'm realizing now that maybe I did not epoxy after I painted my daisies. I really <laughs> don't remember. I may have just risked it and sprinkled that glitter on right on top of those painted daisies. Anyway, after this quick seal dries, we are going to take this down to the turner and we are going to apply our final two coats of epoxy. Anytime I have decals or glitter or anything like that, I always do two coats of epoxy on top. I just feel like it is going to be stronger with multiple coats of epoxy versus just one. And just like before, I am using Artistry's one-to-one -one fast set. If y'all have not tried their fast set, I do suggest it. I get the best finish I have ever had with a fast set with theirs. There is very minimal smell, very minimal bubbles, and it can be used as a top coat. So I think the only epoxy I've used for the past year and a half or so has been this epoxy. And when you're in a time crunch, that two hour cure is a lifesaver. So after we get everything covered, we are going to take our torch one more time. And pop all of those bubbles. And once this layer of epoxy has cured, your tumbler will be finished. And here are some finished pictures. I love how this tumbler turned out. If you guys decide to try this tumbler, please post it in my groups. I love to see what you guys make based off of my tutorials and my items that I sell. If y'all enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, make sure you check out my tutorial group, my damn fancy tribe, or the Drunk Flamingo Glitter group. All are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.